Good morning, I'm John Thielen. Today I'm Fish Ed. I'm out on Lake Winnebago and I'm gonna share the boat today with my buddy Jason Mookie. We're uh we're doing some fun fishing here. We're doing some basin trolling. It's midsummer and Lake Winnebago is renowned for all these walleyes sliding offshore, getting off those breaks and getting out into this mud middle. There's a lot going on out here. There's a lot of bait out here and usually there's a heck of a bite too. So stay right where you're at. Fish head's coming up. So we're running a snap weight system out here today. We're running, running Cotton Cordell Wally Divers, which is just a dynamite crankbait anywhere you go. Really good here on the on Winnebago. But we're using snap weights to get them to the right depth right now. And Jason, why don't you explain to everybody where we're fishing in the column and why we're fishing there? All right. Uh, like on the graph right now, most of the fish are between 10 and 15 feet down and 18 feet of water. Uh, so to get that bait down to that level, like John mentioned, we're using snap weights. Uh, letting about 40 feet of line out, putting a one ounce snap weight on, and then letting additional between 20 and 40 feet down. Now, we are marking some fish up higher, and you'll get that a lot on Lake Winnebago. But what we're trying to do is get them baits below the fish we're marking high, because typically what those are is white bass. And if you run those baits up high, your boards are always going to be full of little white bass and even some larger ones. So we try to get below them to target our game species of walleye. So that's why we're trying to get down to that 10 to 12 feet today. And, and just to explain to you how that, how that weight system works, at two miles an hour for every four feet of line we let out with one ounce of snap weight, we're bringing it down one foot. So when we let out that 40 feet, we're actually getting down 10 extra feet because of that snap weight. Then we've got some of the dive curve in the lure. So we're putting these lures down somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 to 15 feet over 17 feet of water. So we're just above the fish, but like Jason said, just below the fish that we don't want to catch those white bass. I think I've got one back here on this board, Jason. All right. I think there might be something to it. Yeah, this one feels decent. Will you do me a favor? Grab this rod and clear that out for me. I was just gonna set that one back out. Then Jason had a littler one on here, so I turned around, paid attention to what was going on over there, turned back, and, and there's a fish on over here, so. <laughs> it's definitely a good start. I'm gonna just step forward here and let you get that board. All right. Okay. It's one of the nice things about these Wally Divers, you can actually use the tattle flags on these boards because they don't pull hard enough to make it so that you, you know that flag's always down. So it's it's really easy to tell. I'm gonna step right back over here, bud. Oh, we gotta get that snap weight, that's right. Okay. You get that. There we go. All right. Feels like we might have a decent one to start here. <laughs> I think he's exactly what we're looking for. Yep. Oh, Lake Winnebago special. Yeah. There's a lot of these in the system, isn't there? Oh, just that's, that's a great fish right there. there that's exactly what we're going to catch a pile of today. You know, there's big fish out here in Lake Winnebago. But I'll tell you what, there is a ton of these right here. A ton of these 15 inchers and, and 16 inchers, and that's the way this system's always been. And, and what's great about these fish, and I'm gonna keep some today for dinner, so I'm gonna there throw him go. right in the live wall. Perfect one okay. to eat. Look at that, that's a great fish right there. And like I said, we're gonna get a pile of these because this is what this system's known for. But along with it, there'll be some good ones too because that's just how this body of water works. And especially when these fish get out into the basin, because you get such a huge variety of fish out here as they slid out, 
but the reason we're trolling today is you got to cover ground. I mean, we got boats three miles up that way, three miles over here, over here, and everybody's doing the same thing, just covering tons of ground. The best way to do it is with a crankbait. So yeah, absolutely. Let's get all these lines back in the water. We kind of had a little cluster going on. We had a fish outside here. We were adjusting a few things, and, and all of a sudden, we don't got any lines in the water. So let's get them back out there. There we go. All right. Ooh, there's one, Jason. Yeah. He's there. Got lucky this time. The last two fish, we've had to bring everything from you. It was the outside line the last couple. Kind of got lucky this time. This fish hit the inside one. This one feels like a decent eye, too. Looks like it's pulling, right? Yeah, it feels pretty decent. You know, one thing you want to do when you get that board up in the air like this, don't set it back down in the water because then you get that slack moment. Oh yeah, there he is back there. Oh, I got one on my outside. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to net this one. This is a good fish. You got one out there too, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yep, look at that, that flag's down. This is a good fish right here. Take care of this one first. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things I'll tell you. It is so easy to get excited when you're seeing these planter boards start dropping back. Oh, this is a good fish. Look yeah. at that one. Yeah. You start seeing these boards, I'll take care of this. You go ahead and take care of your fish. You start seeing these boards dropping back and you so badly want to grab that thing right away and start messing with it. But if you got a fish on, you know what? You're better off just dealing with the fish you got on and then getting back to it because I'll tell you what, you want to see a mess? Try dealing with everything <laughs> at one time and not, you know, nothing, no one thing goes right at that point. That's another one on Fire Tiger. Yeah, this one will a good that fish. Bad. All right, good. That's a great fish right there. Yeah, it's just kind of what we That's changed. Exactly to. what we're. Yeah, is that now? Is that the rod we changed color on? Oh, it was the fire tiger. Huh. Okay, yep, yep. That's a great fish right there. We'll throw him in. Now we're starting to stack them up, boys. All right, I'm going to get this taken care of a little bit here. You know, one of the things I want to talk about while we're dealing with this fish too is is what we're using. These are Wally Divers, and you know, the Wally Diver was truly one of the very first walleye specific crankbaits to ever come out. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll tell you what, Wally Divers catch everything. On Devil's Lake, a couple weeks ago, I caught a 40 inch pike with it. But, I, you know, when it really comes down to it, the Wally Diver has a shape, it has everything that you want in a walleye bait. It's got a shape that'll look like a shiner minnow, but yet it's deep enough that it'll also look like a perch, too. It's got a great action. And it's got an internal rattle and, and you know we were talking about that earlier how important it is to have a rattle in crankbaits but the right rattle means a lot and this has a nice high pitch rattle between the action the rattle the colors and the size let me tell you something it's pretty hard to beat that crankbait and there's a reason it's been around forever because it just flat out catches fish feel like a decent fish here jason yeah it doesn't feel too bad okay. probably like what you just had okay oh yeah there's some weight on this one Okay. Another good eater. Perfect. This is this is a pretty common size eater fish out here on Winnebago. A lot, a lot of 14 inch fish, 15 inch fish. That one's probably 15. You want to pliers here, bud? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Him in. You know what? We're stacking them up pretty decent now, buddy. You well, know, isn't that funny too? We just switched. We just switched. Jason to that crank yeah. because I was getting them on the fire tigers over here and for a long time it was pretty quiet over there but we talked about that bottom and the right color on the bottom and look at that that quick that same color and that fish going home for dinner perfect pitch him right in there bud but let me show you this because I think that's a such a big deal the bottom of that lure is identical to what the fire tiger is that I just caught that fish on. I mean, in fact, it's hanging right here. Look at this. When you can look at the bottom of a lure and determine that that's what's going on, that's what they're seeing, now you want to switch everything to make sure you have that fluorescent orange on the bottom. That's what we got to do because that quick, yeah. boom, boom. Right. Just picking on them. And now we got a third. We got, an, oh, <laughs> hold that outside board again. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> we'll figure the outside. You got to love that. Tell you what, I'm going to give you this one to clear for me if you would. Yep. 
and I'll start bringing that back one in. Everything gets a little harder to tell too when you get into these these situations where the wind's coming up and you're in more waves. It just get it just gets tougher to tell what's what down there. He's staying down like a walleye. Yeah, I haven't is. even seen him yet. You know, a lot of times they'll get up on the surface with their mouth open in a crankbait. Yeah, the same uh, thing. Now they're one of those 14 inch. Tell you what, I'll just hoist him, but I can just hoist him. He's hooked good. Look at that. You want to talk about eating the lure? That 14 inch walleye ate that lure. He's got both hooks in his mouth. That's awesome. That's what wally divers do though. Day in and day out, they just catch fish. And, and that's the way they've always been. <laughs> Just a, just a dynamite lure, they love the action. You know, fish like that one right there that most guys are out chasing on weekends, throwing the live well. I'll tell you what, it catches them, but let me tell you the other thing, flat out catches big fish too. I mean, you haven't seen it today because we're on a system that's not loaded with big fish. And, and catching those big fish gets a little tricky at this time of the year on Winnebago because there's so many of those, they beat you, they beat the bigger <laughs> guy to the bait, right? You know, it's, it's kind of one of them deals where I'll tell you I'm one of the first at the buffet line and that's the way yeah. these fish are. I mean, it's, it's a real chase, but, but I'll tell you what, you can get out and you can do this. It's really simple. Pick up a handful of wally divers, you know, pick up a handful of colors based on the body of water you're fishing. I, I love the fire tigers, the perches. I don't think you can beat them, no. but you know, you get some chrome, some golds, you got that end of the spectrum covered. I'll tell you what, you can just flat out go out and catch fish. Get out and do some of this. It's a ball. Lake Winnebago is great for the numbers. Great to fill that live well up. Pretty easy fishing, ain't it? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's get a couple more here before we call it a day. <laughs> but you know what? It's been a great day on the water.